Hey, everyone, we're going to get started here in just about two minutes. Hang tight, everyone. Thank you so much. All right, good afternoon, everyone. Hope everyone is having a fantastic Tableau conference. We, of course, are in day three. You are in AVAP's virtual booth. We're so appreciative of your time here today. My name is Nahul Vias. I'm a director of analytics consulting and leader of our Tableau solution group here at AVAP. We're so appreciative of the opportunity to present to you all today and certainly appreciative of your attendance and engagement throughout this session as we discuss how using Tableau's analytics capabilities can help address elements of student retention and success. Before we get into our topic, I'd like to provide just a quick overview of AVAP and share a little bit about ourselves. AVAP is a cross-platform, industry-specialized, global IT advisory and management consulting firm. Our span of consulting and technology resources enable us to build for the future faster and better than before, combining a massive breadth of experienced consultants across several consulting practice areas with the ability to support clients across multiple sectors and industries. Our analytics practice is within AVAP's Advisory Services Business Unit, which combined with other market-leading advisory practice groups enables AVAP's consulting resources to support our clients through various offerings ranging from business analysis and process design, enterprise solution strategy, organizational change management, program and project management, and testing and deployment project activities. These consulting offerings provide our clients with the assurance that AVAP brings market-leading technical and functional consulting resources to every engagement to support our clients' goals. Our analytics offerings span the entire data value chain from organizational data strategy, where we help clients develop a comprehensive roadmap to their analytics and technology investments, rapid ROI, where the focus is on driving adoption and utilization of an analytics capability across the organization's footprint, and continuous value to focus on sustained and scalable growth. These three pillars are complemented through our ability to execute engagements from robust and transformative solution delivery, supporting enterprise data initiatives, rapid Tableau dashboarding quick starts, Tableau technical health checks with a focus on in the infrastructure, setup and configuration of the Tableau environment. And we even serve as a managed services provider to some of our clients to fully host their Tableau capability accompanied with full service operational SLAs and hands-on maintenance and administration. AVAP, of course, is a sponsor again for this year's TC, and we are so very much looking forward to engaging with you all through our virtual booth. So come check us out and let us learn about your data journey and how we may be able to help you. With that said, it's my distinct pleasure to welcome our presenter for today's session, Armand Salimnajad, who's a senior consultant in AVAP's analytics practice. Armand, welcome and thanks so much for the time today. Hope you're doing well. Doing well now. Awesome. I know we've got a fantastic use case today, one that is very important, especially in these times. We've got a lot of higher ed clients, those that are always very keenly looking at the student perspective, student success, how to build retention, and all of those great strategies that come within this use case. With that said, Armand, I'd love to turn it over to you to go through a quick overview of the use case and then dig into a demo. Thanks so much. Sounds good. Um, hi everyone, as Neil said, I'm Armand. Um, I'll be walking you guys through a couple things here today. Um, and yeah, we're gonna be talking about student retention. Um, it's kind of one of the most, um, you know, one of the most critical and, and challenging uh, problems that a college faces to keep their student retention at a very healthy rate. Um, 
So, uh, hey, Nehal, could you go ahead and let me share the screen here? Uh, looks like I'm, I'm not able to do that right now. Okay, thanks, cool. So, um, before I get into the actual demonstration here, I just wanna talk a bit about the subject and kind of, you know, lead us into it. So obviously, I mean, student retention is definitely on the horizon for every college, right? It's, it's, it's one of the most critical things because at the end of the day, the student is the heart of an entire university's, uh, you know, existence, their strategy, their, their you know, their, their stories of success and failure. Um, and keeping students along the ride with them through that journey of, of academia is hugely important. Um, so, you know, for multiple reasons, right? You have the obvious ones of, you know, you know, tuition considerations. It makes it really hard for a university to properly plan and budget if they don't quite have a, gra uh, you know, a grip on, you know, where they're at, you know, semester over semester. But more importantly, you really just want to see those students succeed through their, through their academic experience, right? You don't, you don't really ever want to want to see students, you know, falling off the wayside when, when there would have been methods and, and strategies the university could have taken in order to keep them successful and keep them chugging forward through their academic career. Um, and there have been a lot of different colleges that have done certain things, a couple that come to mind through some research I've done and through people I've talked to um, recently. Florida State is one that comes to mind, and they, they mostly took an approach of interpersonal improvement, you know, heavily investing in things like student advisors and programs to really engage students. And that kind of got them a really nice boost over the last decade or so of about a 20, 22% uh, retention increase year over year, especially in that uh, third semester period when a student's going from their freshman to sophomore year, um, which is definitely a great strategy. Um, but then you've got schools like Georgia State that did a kind of completely opposite strategy to a very similar effect where they took a data-based approach where you know, they tracked on a daily basis uh, upwards of 800 daily risk factors um, and, and had a kind of an army of analysts really going after getting to the bottom of, you know, the nature of a student's, you know, path through the university uh, through the lens of data and, and through that then trying to get to the bottom of how they can better improve a student's ability to stay, uh, to stay along with the university and to really grow and, and, and thrive as a student. Um, and that's kind of the approach that we at AVAP are, are much closely uh, aligned with as a, a very data literate and a, you know, data forward firm. We, we like to use a lot of different tools and technologies to, to help uh, you know, our clients engage with their data in, in new and creative ways. So for my demo today, I'm gonna, I'm gonna kind of walk all of you guys through a little bit of uh, Tableau, a little bit of Python. Um, you know, I'm gonna use some, some mock, some fake data to, to tell some kind of you know, real challenges is, is how I say it. Um, so without further ado, I'm going to kind of lead you guys into this, this uh, student retention dashboard I have here. So hopefully everybody can see this. Um, so here we basically have, you know, a very high level view of a, of a you know, a hypothetical university. And I, you know, I want to just preface this once again and say that this is all mock data, um, you know, generated, you know, randomly based on certain you know, uh, certain distributions of certain demographics that I, I found along my research were, were pretty consistent across the board. Um, so to give you a quick overview of the dashboard, you know, this is all really about giving somebody a high level, but then also a very granular view of what their college looks like from a, from a performance and from a retention perspective, from a demographic perspective, regional. Um, so, you know, we have our, we have our big ticket items here at the top. We, we want to definitely use this dashboard to get to the bottom of our retention rate, which, you know, if, if that's the name of the game, we want to, we want to give people that instant access to that number as they filter and, and interact with the dashboard and as well as the population, uh, which corresponds to that percentage of retention. Um, at the next level here, we've got uh, a campus map. We've got three different campuses. Um, you know, we've got a, a main campus in Columbus, Ohio, and then we've got two satellite campuses in Cleveland and Cincinnati. And, um, you know, the size of these, these dots corresponds to the size of the campus, and then their color corresponds to their individual retention rates. So you can see that Columbus is doing really strong with 80%, Cleveland's in a similar ballpark, and then Cincinnati lagging pretty far behind at 54%. Um, on the right-hand side, we see we've got a We've got our, our GPA distribution across the colleges, and it's colored by um, whether or not that that cluster of, of scores uh, was corresponding to a student who retained or who departed. Um, down below that, we have a bunch of different demographics and and uh, kind of measure analyses here. We've got our gender, race, 
demographics and also a demographic to see whether or not the students are, are in the working or non-working space and the corresponding, uh, you know, retained half and the, uh, the, sorry, the departed half and the retained half of that. Um, then we also have uh, what I, I really like to utilize uh, these box and whisker plots when dealing with certain spreads of data like this. We've got our financial aid and our attendance and for a quick statistical refresher for anybody who's unfamiliar with box and whiskers, um, our, our central square here, the, the kind of colored and square, that's what you'd call the interquartile zone, which in layman's terms is 50% of everybody falls in there. That's your middle 50% of everybody. Um, that's kind of your average spread there. And then the ends of the boxes are kind of where that next 25% lies on either side of your spread. And if there's any points outside of that, like there are in attendance, these are all your outliers down here that are, you know, that, that this, this piece is maybe a little bit less than 25%. So you've got a lot of outliers on the bottom there. Um, so this is a nice high level dashboard, right? But, you know, we want to chop it up a bit. So this is where a lot of our filters come in and we want to, we want to give the user a quick ability to just kind of take a look at their data and, you know, apply filters and, and remove filters. So, you know, right off the bat, if I'm, if I'm a quick user jumping in here, I, I see, you know, if I'm looking for issues with retention, I see that Cincinnati stands out as a campus that, you know, is having some issues right now, right? They're well behind our other campuses uh, from a retention perspective. So, you know, I, if I want to jump to the Cincinnati campus, I can quickly jump there and then kind of filter my dashboard uh, from there on. So, you know, we see if we go back between the Cincinnati campus and the main campuses, there's not a huge drop off, for example, in GPA. Maybe you have a little bit in the lower spectrum, but it's not this huge shift downwards, not to the point that you'd expect maybe a, you know, 25% decrease in, in retention. So that kind of begs the question, you know, what else is going on here? Uh, but if I, you know, I would take a closer you look at this working demographic in the bottom right hand corner when we go to you know across the board we've got you know maybe 20 percent of all students uh working uh, or versus non-working across all campuses but you know if we look at cincinnati we we can quickly see okay that, that jumps up a lot right that jumps up a lot there and we also see that we've got a pretty big demographic of the working sub demographic that is departing the school after their second semester so maybe at this point i want to take a quick look at you know what it looks like in the in the working demographic and so once i navigate to working i immediately can tell that we're dealing with an issue in the working demographic um and you know it's not an insignificant issue it's 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 definitely playing out across the board so for starters uh the first thing also i want to draw your guys attention to is we don't see a huge decline in gpa here either we see maybe some on the lower end but for the most part we've got a similar spread so you know, why then is our retention so much lower? It's, it's going down from, you know, 76% to 60%. Um, and I want to draw your attention to the financial aid and attendance here, right? So when we are looking, uh, you know, in, a, in the, the whole demographic, we see, we see financial aid, you know, it's, it's hovering nicely around maybe an average of 13k um, paid out of the first year and attendance is sitting pretty high with even the lowest, you know, the, the lowest average person, even on the low end, it's usually around that 40% threshold with most students well above 80%. Um, but then when we look at the working demographic, first of all, we see there's a huge drop in average financial aid, right? It's a very substantial drop all the way down to maybe that $8,000 uh, average. And we also see the bottom really falls out on that attendance if you see if you see this this bottom part of the threshold you know maybe our average is still around 76 but the bottom half of our of our of our students is you know they're they're sitting around that that 37 percent attendance rate which i mean that's you know definitely makes sense you know i don't know how many of you all worked when you're in college but of all the people that i knew who worked and when i was working it was definitely a lot harder to make the classes that i that i had to juggle at that same time which you know, that's a lot of stress on an individual. And these things kind of, once you can see them pop off the page, like, like a quick dashboard can allow you to jump in and do it. They definitely give you some really nice food for thought. And um, with that, I want to then, you know, kind of draw you guys that next level of analysis here, which is, you know, okay, we, we see the broad pictures, but maybe now we want to dive into some of the, the user stories, right? We want to understand, okay, you know, what really is going on here among the, among the, the demographic that's departed. So if we navigate there and then we hop over to our student level summary here, which I have as, you know, kind of a granular view of our data. Um, this is all the individuals. I have a student ID associated with each of these individuals. Um, and this is, you know, for if you want to take that next level dive quickly from, from where you just were, um, you know, we've, we've, you know, carried over our filter here, 
to only to departed students. And you know, maybe I just want to take a look down here and just see, you know, some some student stories and maybe give myself some food for thought for next levels of analysis and next levels of dashboarding, right? Um, you know, we can see certain things like, um, let's take this individual, for example, right? Um, hundred percent attendance, you know, a stellar attendance and pretty high, um, you know, financial aid relative to the average, getting significant financial aid, but the GPA isn't really there, um, not the way that you'd maybe want. And then, you know, heavy in the working and commuting demographics. So maybe this raises a lot of questions in terms of, you know, um, is this person juggling more than just his own life, right? Does he have family that's relying on him? Um, does he have family that needs him financially or, or personally? Um, you know, how far is he commuting, right? Maybe we need to get to the bottom of that. You know, if is he working one job or two jobs, right? Is he getting any help outside of school? There, there are a couple of things that this particular person, much like any of these other individuals, would, you know, once we can kind of dive into the personal story, we can maybe give ourselves that second round of, you know, creative analysis and and kind of go back into the drawing board which tableau really allows us to do cleanly um so with that being said in that same vein uh, one thing i want to draw your guys attention to um and kind of you know hop off this tableau piece for a moment is if we want to take that next step we could maybe do certain things in the realm of advanced analytics through python um and i've, I've spun up a script here which is and i'm not going to dive too much into the code itself um but we have a couple methods through which we can um, analyze this. And if we just go on our basic statistical like averages, we, we don't really give ourselves the means to capture all the story. But here I have uh, two different machine learning models I'm running on the, the, the mock data I've developed. And once again, I want to asterisk that this is all mock data. So it's not really, you know, me finding some gigantic pattern in the data. But you could also say that, you know, this, this picks out the patterns I placed there pretty nicely. So um, you know, if you applied this to uh, a data set that you are not familiar with, um, it will, you know, potentially go a lot further than, you know, a, a novice statistician would be able to without the tools they have available to them. So go ahead and run this. It shouldn't take too long to run. And we see pretty much immediately that, you know, the two models I'm running, which one is a random forest and one is a logistic regression, they run very quickly. It's not a lot of code for somebody if they were going to really dive in there. And we see we're immediately improving on some of our accuracies, right? Uh, in terms of the overall predictions of what the outcome would be for a student to say, okay, here's information about a student. Are they going to be retained or are they going to depart? That's what this model is trying to say. And we see we have overall accuracy immediately jump from a 64% to upwards of 78% for both of the machine learning models. And then when we go in the specific um, predictions for the very particular demographics, we're seeing similar increases as well. Um, so this is a good example of where once you go down the path of Tableau to give yourself some food for thought and some, some deep, um, you know, grappling with the questions and, and formation of the questions you want to ask, then you can turn around and use some other tools as well to take that next step into your analysis. Um, uh, quickly before I, I wrap this up, uh, you know, I just want to be fully transparent about some of the methods I use to develop this data. Um, this is just, uh, once again, developed with Python, used a lot of the research to determine what demographics were and then tried to make them mutually exclusive of each other while, while generating my, my data outputs. And each, you know, this will run and it'll create new data files of brand new students each time. So um, with that, hopefully this was, uh, you know, a, a fairly insightful and, um, you know, and, and, and food for thought presentation that, you know, maybe you all can take something from and uh, you know, let me know if you have any questions or if you guys have any comments and, uh, yeah, thanks for, thanks for participating. But, uh, with that, I'll open it up for questions. Armand, thank you so much. Again, those that are on the line here, please use the chat box to put in any questions that you may have. Armand, my, my head is kind of spinning with some ideas on this, right? Because as we talk about the ability of student retention and student success, I think it's very, it, you know, we, we are all very sensitive, I think, as the data is providing us those insights that every student has her or his own story, right? And it's, it's, it behooves a higher education institution to really understand, you know, those individual trees in the forest by trees, I mean students, but really understand, you know, not necessarily catering at an individual perspective, but even understanding that, hey, we've got a demographic here that is working that may have priorities that 
quite frankly, for them could be a little bit more weighty than the ability to actively attend class. It doesn't mean that they don't love attending class, but they've got other priorities for it. How do we accommodate for that, right? And I'm thinking even down the line, you know, if I were a higher education institution, we talk about elements of scheduling. We talk about elements of facilities use. We talk about elements of providing online classes, right? Because now when we're looking at this, there's an imperative now to really focus in on those that are working commuters, those that really may not have the logistical capability to get to class in person every day. What can we do to continue to nurture and cultivate their thirst for knowledge by providing them an online platform to take those same classes? I think it's a phenomenal, phenomenal use case. I also love the compliment that you have with Python and Tableau. You know, obviously you've got a lot of experience in the data engineering space. Those that may not have that, you know, this is something that certainly in, in you know, from a AVAP perspective, we're absolutely able to help across the entire data value chain on this. Um, but I think the complement between the, the Python scripting and the Tableau piece is so important because it really opens up, to your point, a whole other spectrum of possibilities, right? You can even start talking about this from a predictive perspective by putting in some modeling in here to really forecast out, um, you know, quarters, semesters, maybe even years in advance for your strategic lens of scheduling, curriculum development, maybe it's even just um, assessments of your student population in general and providing those strategies in a pragmatic way for them to be successful. Armand, walk us through, I guess, from this perspective, you know, just the overall lift from a Tableau side in complementing that with Python. Because I don't think a lot of people really have that experience. Um, it could be, quite frankly, it could be a little bit overwhelming. Well, walk us through, I guess, that experience, because that's that's an interesting skill set that you have. Yeah, yeah. I think, and and to your point about the marriage of the two, I think, uh, you know, and, and not to say that Tableau is not robust in its data cleaning capabilities, but at the end of the day, I mean, I, you know, I'm biased. I'm a data engineer, right? So um, I definitely see, see the full scope of all the tools in my toolbox, but I, I really see that Tableau is frequently only as good as the data you give to it, right? It's you are what you eat kind of. Um, and, you know, if you, you have the means to, to do powerful things behind the scenes with your data, you can, you can really do some great combo plays in Tableau. It just involves a little bit of that, that lift on the back end. But I would say from a Python perspective, I think there's, there's so many more people who could grapple with, uh, with a tool like Python than, than they realize um, because more and more languages and coding languages nowadays, A, have easier syntax to actually program out, and B, they have these huge uh, user groups and these, these whole communities that if, if a user who was so inclined in the industry to, to go into Tableau and finds themselves again and again running up on these barriers of really complex backend data issues that they're not capable of dealing with in Tableau, um, is really worth their while to, to, to to sort of go down that path and see, okay, yeah, I mean, you know, I know coding is daunting, but it's it's worthwhile to take a look and see. Maybe you're up to it when you didn't realize you were, because at the end of the day, you know, these tools are are meant to be used, right? They're not meant to be built so that people cannot learn them. Um, a lot of people I know are self-taught with them, and you know, I myself find myself doing most of my own teaching uh, of new Python techniques. So. That's, that's a message I would always share with people is when you go down the road of data visualization, the more tools you can add on the back end as well will make your product infinitely better because you'll have the ability to really robustly clean and, and sort of partner with your front end tools. Absolutely. No, that's, that's great. Great perspective. Thank you there. I'm also intrigued about the possibility of the financial aid element and how you have that incorporated in the dashboard. Because I think a, you know, a lot of what is happening now is the essence of equity and the ability for students across all demographics to have an opportunity to get that financial aid, right? Obviously higher education costs money, but it's also the ability to get access to that financial aid. Um, and quite frankly, some of the elements that come with it. Walk us through, I guess, the ease in which you feel 
adding additional data sets and data sources to you know this particular use case what what typically is the lifter armand you know if someone were to say you know let's add in this other layer to provide again another level of multi-dimensionality to what the dashboard can provide what what's that approach like for you yeah so i think from an organizational perspective and the fortunate thing i would almost say that the lift for an actual college organization would be much easier than for me trying to fake the data on my demonstration end right because the great thing about being an organization is that you don't have to make the data up right it is your data you have the data and especially for a college institution you have all of these backend systems all these databases and they're all tied together from students perspective so if someone came to me and and they wanted to tie two, three, four college-based databases together, and it's all owned by the college. And they maybe, as a, as a, you know, an employee of the college, just don't quite have that skill set there. That's not a particularly daunting task, really. It's, it's a pretty trivial data engineering challenge to tie up multiple data sets together. And I mean, it gets more and more complicated depending on the specific criteria and maybe some of the restrictions of either budget or, 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 or infrastructure. But I mean. Once you have the data available to you, at that point, it's just a matter of you know when and not if we'll be able to to tie it together, um, because that's really what data is all about: is is bringing in more and more data into you know from from a similar system into you know a bigger picture effort, and and that's frequently what we're doing, whether it's for you know educational organizations or you know the state of Ohio or you know any number of you know, of, of organizations. That's that to me is kind of uh, it's almost a, a, a prerequisite to anything, and it's not a daunting one at that. Armand Salamnajad, I can't thank you enough for your time this afternoon. Thank you Absolutely. so much. I love the use case. I love the importance of the use case, and I love that it's really centered around, again, student success, student retention. It's so important. I want to invite everyone, of course, over to AVAP's virtual booth here at Tableau Conference, and also please do Check, it out, check us out at avap.com. You can learn really not only about our analytics practice and all the cool stuff that folks like Armand and our other great consultants do with data, but across the board of our other client offerings. This is Nehul Vias. Thank you again for joining and hope you all have a great day.